Yeah, like, like I said, welcome to the webinar today, calibration of the angle of repose using Rocky DEM. And for this webinar, we have a little outline which uh, is the introduction into OptiSlang and Rocky and the calibration tasks, the simulation model, the process integration of Rocky into OptiSlang, the design of experiment, the sensitivity analysis, and the model calibration, of course. After that, we want to continue with robustness evaluation and a summary. First of all, a little introduction into OptiSlang. OptiSlang is a tool for real-world uh, CAE applications. You all know some of them. I think crash applications for the automotive with airplanes, turbo machinery, or a cell phone. So, you know, we have to deal with a lot of physical phenomena, which may be coupled nonlinear or high dimensional. Sometimes we have failed designs due to meshing, simulation, license failure. And in every case, we have a lot of parameters. So, yeah, life is hard, and that is something that OptiSlang has to uh, keep in mind when we want to use it. So, OptiSlang is a general purpose tool for variation analysis, which is, uh, yeah, something of sensitivity analysis, design and data exploration, and what we want to do today calibration of virtual model to test, and the last thing which OptiSlang can be is robust design optimization and design for Six Sigma. So we can use a lot of different CIE tools to support your application, and in the normal cases, OptiSlang at first is a tool for the process automatization, then we do the design variation, then the sensitivity analysis, optimization, and the robustness evaluation. And OptiSlang should be easy to use with predefined workflows, algorithmic results, and robust default settings. In the webinar today, we also want to speak about Rocky DEM. So I've prepared a few slices about Rocky. Here you can see four little clips about applications of Rocky. Here we have biomass handling of wood chips and the food industry. Here we have a truck which dumps its rocks and a shoe transfer in mining. So you see we have a lot of possible applications with Rocky and uh, as you maybe know, when we have a simulation, it takes always a little bit time to get our result. Here's a little benchmark for a pharmaceutical application. And here are compared uh, only the CPU against GPUs. And we see, okay, when we have a GPU which is designed for computing, then we have a huge uh, decrease of computational time. And so we are able to run a lot of designs in a very short time, which is necessary when we want to do um, design variation, which is our goal today. So what is Rocky zoning? Rocky calculates the sum of the forces for torque and, and so on for each particle. And this sum is yeah, sensitive to, to noise. Where comes this noise from? When we look at this example of particle falling and sliding, we see, okay, this particle hits the wall. And when this particle hits the wall, we have a little overlap. And this overlap is sensitive to this noise, or sometimes the cause of our noise. So we have to take this into consideration when we think about the EM simulation. And we see, okay, we have the normal contact force, which is also a function of the overlap of the stiffness and the size of the particle. 
and the tangential contact force, which is dependent on the frictional coefficients and the size again. So you see we have a lot of different parameters which have influence on our calculation and which should be calibrated to get uh, yeah, trustworthy results of our simulation. Okay, now I would go on with the calibration task. We have decided to show you a little example of the angle of repose and drawdown angle. These both angle describe a pill of, yeah, a pill quite well and uh, are depending on these friction parameters which I have shown you already. And what is what we want to do? We have our model parameters, the static friction, dynamic friction, rolling friction, which have influence of our simulation model. Then we want to solve the simulation model for different parameter sets of these at a few angle of reposes and drawdown angle and try to find that parameter set which matches quite well with the angle of repose and drawdown angle we have measured once. And for that we have chosen a few parameters to take into consideration. This is the particle density, the particle diameter, the stiffness of our particles, static dynamic friction, restitution, rolling friction, and the mass flow. And the simulation can be seen in this little clip. Hopefully. Yeah. And here we see, okay, we have a pile and now we can calculate these angle of repose and drawdown angle and can compare them with the results of our experiments. Okay, now I want to come to the process integration. What is OptisLang doing? In normal cases, we have a user-defined design space, which consists of design variables and scattering variables. And with these, we are going into the CAA process, which is a white box in our case, because you know what your CAA process is doing. And after you have done the CAA process, you get a few response variables, which are your outputs, and now we try to find surrogate models, which yeah replaces the CAE process, so that we can do an optimization without using CAE calls, which makes it quite fast and easy to use. And this is possible with the Ansys Workbench, of course, Excel, MATLAB, Ansys APDL, Adams. And what I want to show you today is Rocky. So for Rocky, we have three ways to integrate this into OptiSlang. The first way is we use Rocky inside the Optis, inside the Ansys Workbench, which is shown here. Then we can also use OptiSlang as Workbench add-in. The other way would be we using the Workbench inside OptiSlang, which would like would would look like this here. And we have a direct integration via script files. And this is something I want to show you. This is how Optis Langers look like. And when we take the solver wizard, we can choose Rocky. And then we can choose our Rocky simulation file. Then we have to select a export script for our angle of repose. And now, Rocky starts and the script is executed. And now we're making a copy of this Rocky simulation file and this copy is saved without results. And now We see our workflow here, which was automatically generated. And now we have done the process integration for Rocky. So I would go on with the slides. 
Okay, first of all, we want to gain design understanding, which means we want to investigate the parameter sensitivities and reduce the complexity of our problem, which is necessary to make a good calibration onto our measurement results, because we can only calibrate parameters which have influence. Otherwise, these parameters get values which are not reliable, and this is something we want to avoid. After this model calibration, we want to check the robustness of our calibration, so we want to see when we have a scattering input parameter, which influence does these have on our output. And when this process is done, we have a calibrated material data, which is trustworthy for us as simulation and engineers and for our stakeholders. So first of all, the sensitivity analysis. Like I said, we want to understand the most important input variables. So this is our task in the sensitivity analysis. What are the steps to achieve this? Is we start with a design of experiment, maybe 11 hypercube sampling, and then we run the CIE process for all of these design points. Then we calculate the meta model of optimal prognosis, which should represent each output of our simulation quite well, and then we check the coefficient of prognosis for these outputs to see, okay, which input parameter has an influence on which output parameter. So we want to understand and reduce the optimization task and see, okay, is there any solver noise or extraction noise of our outputs? And a little more detailed uh, view is here. So we start a design of experiment, and then we call our CIE solver, and then we can do the regression method, where I would recommend that we do a sophisticated meta model, and then we can evaluate the sensitivity with the correlation and variance-based quantification. Okay, this would look like this. When we have integrated our solar chain, we can use the sensitivity wizard. And here we are yeah, taken by the hand that we adjust the parameter bounds of our parameters which we have selected inside Rocky. And then we were asked which sampling method we want to use. And here we have a traffic light system which indicates, okay, in this case, you should use space filling that in hypercube. When we go to our example, it would look like this. We have here these eight parameters, which I have shown you already. And one parameter is new. This is the scaling factor for the friction, because we have to decide that the static friction must be bigger than the dynamic friction. So we said, okay, static friction is a dependent parameter, which yeah, is solved by the equation dynamic friction times the scaling factor. So we are making sure that the static friction is always bigger. And so we have now eight optimization parameters and one dependent parameter. With these, we have done this design of experiment, have made 100 solver calls, and then we get this ampule plot of the drawdown angle and the repose angle. Here's the drawdown angle, here the repose angle. And now we can see this red dot it is within this ampule plot, so we are very, very sure that we are able to calibrate onto our measurement results and we can see, okay, this ampule plot has a little scattering around this, which, yeah, is dependent on the size of these angles. When we have a bigger size of the angle, the scattering gets more. This is quite uh, interesting at this point. Then we would go on 
with the meta model of optimal prognosis, which is here shown for the drawdown angle. And this showed, okay, to explain the drawdown angle or the repose angle, we only need one parameter. This is the rolling friction. This is our most important parameter, which describes these both angles very, very well. And as you can see, we have a nonlinear but monotonic uh, equation and only one important input parameter, which is very important for the next step that we want to calibrate onto these measurement results, which is quite here. And the calibration can use signals or scalar values. And yeah, we want to see, okay, which parameter set fits to these measurements. This is done in that way. At first, we have defined the design space, which was done in the sensitivity analysis. Then we have to check the design space to identify the sensitive parameters and responses, which we have done. We know by now, okay, the angle of repose and the drawdown angle are sensitive to the rolling friction. So we have to optimize our rolling friction that we have the best fit between these simulations and these experiments. And this will be done on the meta model of optimal prognosis. To do this, we have to choose an optimizer which will find the best fit. And there we have different possibilities. The first one, of course, are the gradient based. And they only works very well if we have a smooth function without local minima. Otherwise, we have to repeat the search to get an idea, are there any local minima? On the other hand, we have the adaptive response surface method, which is yeah, more or less the default uh, choice. And yeah, at least we have the nature inspired optimization group, which is the evolutionary algorithm and the PSO. In this example, we will use the gradient-based method because we have a very smooth function. Maybe you can remember, and it's only one parameter which is important, so it's quite easy to solve. And again, for this optimization task, we have a little wizard with a decision tree. And here you can set, okay, how good is the analysis status? So how how good do you think is this uh, optimization already achieved? Maybe you have a design on which you're working for years, so you would know, okay, I have done my best. So you would set another status then okay, I have only started the simulation, I have no really idea. And this is a user setting which helps us to recommend the best optimizer. So we have to define the optimization criteria. In our case, it's the repose angle minus the measurement value and that's squared and then the sum with the drawdown angle minus measurement and squared. And so we have only one objective for our optimization. And the goal in this optimization is to minimize the difference between simulation and experiment. This was done with the NMPQL, which is the gradient based optimizer and we have found um, a quite good optimum for these angles by using the best design from the sensitivity analysis. And as I said, we have done this on the meta model of optimal prognosis. So we haven't used any solar core to get these results. 
and you see, okay, they are not perfect 9 degree or 40 degree, so there is a little variation left. And to see, okay, is this variation something we have to take into consideration or is it okay? We will do a robustness evaluation. So we check if the model is stable due to small parameter variations, which is quite important, yeah, to increase your your knowledge about your system. And to that, we are doing again a design of experiment with an optimized head and hypertube sampling. Then we check, okay, how big is the output parameter variation and get an idea, okay, do we have find a stable calibration point or not. Now you see the workflow for the robustness evaluation and the parameter set is this time a little bit different from the sensitivity analysis because in this case we have to take scattering into consideration so we have no bounds we have these shape functions the PDF which describe the distribution of these parameters and we can only look for the rolling friction because we know by now that only the rolling friction has influence on these angles we have simulated so the other ones are set as constants and we said okay the rolling friction has a coefficient of variation of one percent so it's a very small variation to get an idea okay how much variation on the output side we will have with this setting so the output side would look like this we see the histogram of our angle of of our repose angle, sorry. And then we look, okay, how much scattering we have of this angle, and we see it's slightly larger than on the input side, which means we have a minor numerical noise for this repose angle. But the important thing is the mean value fits quite well to our reference value. So I think we can be quite happy with that step. Now we want to check the drawdown angle. Here we see, okay, we have a larger noise, or much larger noise than on the input side, which shows, okay, there's a significant numerical noise for the drawdown angle, which was already, which already could be seen in the sensitivity study. So we already knew there, okay, with our meta model of optimal prognosis, we see we can only explain 90% of these variation of the drawdown angle, so 10% could be noise. And this is something we see here again. But the mean value fits quite well to our reference value. So now it's the engineering choice to decide, okay, is this a trustworthy result or not? From our side, we would say, okay, it is trustworthy because we cannot improve the CAE process more to achieve a better result. And now I would like to come to my summary. We were able to identify the most important input parameter and we could estimate the response values and the numerical noise, all with the help of the meta model of optimal prognosis. And we could calibrate these unknown input parameters with yeah, respect to our experimental data. And we have done a statistical validation of these optimal parameter sets, and we could prove the agreement 
between the reference value and the simulation process. And we have used 100 simulations for the sensitivity study and 100 for the robustness evaluation. And yeah, so it was a quite fast process. And now there would be your possibility to ask questions or if you need more information, you can write on at support at unano.com or go to our homepage and look for the LEO journal, which contains a lot of information. So, are there any questions? Yeah, yeah, uh, of course. You get the data, you get these uh, record of these webinars, and you can download these um, simulation files and the OptiSlang files from the customer portal. So I hope this answers your question. Are there other questions? Ah, okay. The definition of this dependent parameter. This is quite easy. So we can go back to OptiSlang. At first, we take the sensitivity wizard and drop it on the parametric solver system, which was created due to the presentation. And now we see, okay, we have all these parameters which are included into the rocket file. They are extracted automatically. And now we go through this wizard and then we can define this dependent parameter. For now, we don't need, okay, we could import the parameter bounds so that we have them. This can be done with a CSV file. Now you see, okay, all these parameter bounds which were used in the presentation are imported. Now we can go through this wizard and see, okay, it recommends advanced and hypertube sampling. And then we press finish. And we create a second system for the sensitivity study. And here we can change the parameter. At first, we add one. And increase the size here a little bit. So we have added this parameter zero. Now we can give this parameter any range from one to 10 and the reference value of five. And now we go on and say, okay, the restitution should be a dependent parameter. So we select this here and now we are able to include an equation, for example, rolling friction times parameter zero. And so we have yeah, set up a dependent parameter. Okay, has this helped for your question? Okay, feel free to ask other questions. Ah, okay. The, the meta model. How do we see that it is trustworthy? Okay, then we go into our OptiSlang process and go into the meta model of optimal prognosis, show the post processing from the sensitivity study. And now we see that this is already open. So he, now we see different plots. Maybe we should start with the residual plot. Here we see the value of the simulation against the value which is included in the meta model for this 
special design point and you see, okay, when the fit would be perfect, then all of these points would lie on one line. So we have a real life application and we see, okay, it's not the case, but we have here error bounds, which are these red lines. So at first we would check, are there any design points which are outside of these red bounds? And then we have to look deeper into them and to decide, okay, are these outliers or not? When we have done this and we see, okay, there are no outliers like in this case, then we could go on and check the COP matrix, which is this plot. And here we see, okay, the coefficient of prognosis. This is calculated internally in OptiSlang, this method and says to you, okay, we are able to describe for the drawdown angle, for example, 90% of the variation of this angle with our meta model. So there's 10% variation which can be explained with the meta model, and this could have different reasons. One reason could be that we only include the rolling friction into our meta model and the other reason could be numerical noise. And I have tested these meta models with different parameter combinations and have seen, okay, we don't gain on the COP value when we include other parameters. So the automatic selection of only the rolling friction worked very well. And so only the other yeah, possibility remains that we have 10% of variation, which cannot be explained. And this is still a very good value. We would recommend to start with an optimization on the meta model of optimal prognosis when you have a value of at least 18% here. So we have 90, that is uh, 10% higher than the recommendation, so we can use the meta model of optimal prognosis to do the optimization, but at least 80% should be the COP, that is its speed trustworthy. And at the end, you still have to check as engineer to see, okay, the dependencies which are shown here uh, make sense and are understandable to you. So this is the, the third check you have to do. And here we see the meta model of optimal prognosis. In this case, only two-dimensional because there's only the rolling friction and the drawdown angle. And don't worry, these points could not lie on this line because there are still a little bit of variation due to the other parameters which are checked in the design of experiment. So has this help to yeah, say when a meta model is trustworthy or not? Or do you have a, another question by now? Mm, okay, when we have a COP of 100%, this would mean that we could describe the behavior of the system to 100%. So we have a variation of the output variable and we are able to describe this completely. Um, this means on the one hand we have a very, very low numerical noise and on the other hand that we could describe this process very well. But we have to keep in mind if we have a constant value we would also get a COP of 100% because we are able to describe this value to 100%. So we have always to check when the value is 100%, do we have any variation? So, and we have another question. What happens if my experimental data uh, is not sufficient to define the, the input parameters? Do I get this question correctly? because by, by now I have not understand it. Um, 
we, we check these experimental values against these. Ah, okay. Ah, now, now, now it's clear. Okay, uh, the question is, we have a system of maybe one uh, output and a lot of inputs which are yeah, important for this output and now we want to take sure that we get only these parameter set which is uh, unique for this uh, result. So we have to check in such a case with the of another plot, which is included in the post-processing. And here we would use the I'm sorry, parallel coordinates plot. Okay, now we have all input parameters and our output parameters. So we would imagine that we only have one output parameter, for example, this drawdown angle, and now we want to say, okay, we have a result from our experiment, which says this value is 40%. And now we would imagine that all of these parameters are important. So you see, okay, we have a huge variation, for example, for the dynamic friction for this value and for the stiffness and for the scaling factors and for the density. So we would go on and check the, the model to see, okay, is this a uh, the physics which we are describing here. So is this model correctly implemented? When we say yes, okay, then we would do this optimization or this calibration on different starting points and check, okay, do we find always the same optimum or do we really have local minima? And when we get a lot of local minima, we would have to check them in the robustness analysis to see, okay, how do they behave when the input is scattering? And then we could decide which optimum would be the best to use. This would be the way when we have an under-constrained calibration problem. But most of the times, uh, I think this will not uh, be necessary, or we have to find other experiments and yeah, do the calibration for them as well. Yeah, like I said, uh, we will share this uh, record and the slides and these files for the simulation and the OptiSlang files will be added to the customer portal. So we will have access to them. Okay. Are there other questions? Where to see uh, if there are a lot of minimas? Okay. For that, we would also use the meta model of optimal prognosis. So here we see the example for the angle for a uh, repose angle, and here we see okay, there are no local minima. It's a very easy function, but when we have more input parameters, we would see here okay, how do they behave? And then we have to check okay, we take the repose angle and then all of the important import parameters with an evil line here and then we would go on and go through these input parameters to see, okay, do we have a lot of minimas? 
this would be the the easiest option to do it. Another option which is included since the last Optis Lang release is that you could define the uh, criteria for the optimization already into the sensitivity study and then you were able to see as an output the objective function. And there you are able to see, okay, is this a straight function with only one minima or are there a lot of local minima? So this visualization of this objective function is a quite new feature which could help to see are there a lot of local minima. Okay, do you have another question? Yeah, it's uh, possible to export the meta model as FMU. So you only have to click on this meta model of optimal prognosis and then say export as FMU. So you can use it in you know, system simulation software. Or do you have another export in mind? Because you could only also use this meta model of optimal prognosis inside Excel. This would be also possible. And we are able to export the equation for these yeah, easy surrogate functions. Okay. Are there questions remaining? Okay. I, I think not, but if a question comes to your mind, feel free to write an email, maybe at support at donado.com, and then I will be able to... Oh, no, I, I'm sorry, I've seen another question. No, no, okay, I've overlooked, no, no, I've not overlooked any question. Um, yeah, if, you, if another question comes to your mind, feel free to write them at support at donado.com. And then I will try to answer them as soon as possible. So then, thanks for your attention. I hope you have uh, enjoyed this. And yeah, then have a nice day.